Kentucky. I like having on Senator Paul and we can agree on things. And I want to thank him for offering his uh, his motion yesterday to dismiss the article of impeachment as improvidently delivered and unconstitutional. Is that a fair description, Senator Paul, of what you attempted to do yesterday? Exactly, Hugh. The thing is, is that to impeach former presidents means that we could impeach any private citizen, really. And our founding fathers didn't want that. I mean, the British would do that to former office holders in Latin America. They still do that. Every president of Guatemala is elected in fanfare and then goes to jail when he leaves. You know, that's the kind of thing that happens in a in a third world country. But we don't want that to happen in our country. And so I think it was important to put people on record. The other reason I did the vote was uh, this basically essentially by the vote yesterday says that the impeachment trial is dead on arrival and that it's going to be a partisan thing where the Democrats can have fun with their, you know, Eric Swalwell and all his, uh, you know, famous spydom. He, he will be able, they'll be able to make political points, but basically the actual uh, idea that this is a real impeachment is over now. I want to read some headlines, Senator Paul, just so people understand. The Financial Times, nearly all Republicans back Trump in early impeachment tests, United Kingdom's Telegraph. Democrats' hope of convicting Trump fade is only five Republican senators back holding a Senate trial. The Times of Israel, Republican senators mostly vote against holding Trump impeachment trial. The Wall Street Journal, most Republican senators reject constitutionality of Trump impeachment. It goes on and on. I think 45 is now uh, the ceiling uh, for, um, or, or actually the floor for votes against it. They might, you might gain some of the five Republicans who actually voted to proceed by virtue of the due process arguments and lack of, of evidence. Does everyone generally agree that this thing is a sham now? I think so. But there's another question that really some people have bought into that I think needs to be discussed and needs to be discarded. And that's the idea of incitement to violence. The president said, march peacefully and patriotically. He said, go fight for your country. Well, I, I defy anybody. I asked yesterday any Democrat to stand up and say they've never used the words fight figuratively in a political speech. Every politician of Republican or Democrat or any stripe uses those kind of words all of the time figuratively. But I also pointed out that Democrat words have been very specific and insightful. The most alarming was probably when the gunman shot four or five of us at the baseball practice, nearly killing Steve Scalise, and said, this is for health care. But what the Democrats were saying at the time that was insightful, they were saying, oh, the Republican plan for health care is you get sick and then you die. Can you imagine if you had a child with leukemia that was dying or died at that time, and you think, oh, my goodness, the Republicans killed my son, and they, they want my son to die. And so you could see how that could be insightful. But you know what? Not one Republican called for the impeachment of Bernie Sanders because we didn't think that was fair. In fact, I downplayed that this guy was a Bernie Sanders supporter. But now you've got all these Democrats saying that they you know, think the president should go to jail for inciting an armed insurrection when he said march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol. It's well, I've been teaching it's, it's, it's double standard. I've been teaching Brandenburg versus Ohio for 25 years, and you must have the present intention and capability of causing a riot. I do not believe they will find evidence for that. But even if they do, there's a due process argument, Senator, which is the House did not produce evidence and simply passed a resolution. Do, and, and previously, impeachment trials have been limited to the record assembled in the House, which the president did not have a chance to contribute to. This is, this is a miscarriage of justice on every level that we Americans understand. Well, Professor Turley came and spoke to us at lunch yesterday, and he's a constitutional expert as well. And he said basically that this doesn't pass the smell test with Brandenburg, that no jury in the country or no judge would countenance this argument in a real court of law, that there's not a chance in hell that this could actually be proven in court. And so they really – but the thing is, is the left-wing media repeats it so often that now it is the absolute truth. And if you question it, you probably should be deplatformed. If you say that he did not incite a violent uh, insurrection at the Capitol, if you believe that or even say that, you probably should go to a camp somewhere to be deprogrammed. That's, that's how bad it's getting, this group think that there is only one truth. And if you don't agree to it anymore, you're not going to be allowed to speak. Now, Senator, I want to read to you a tweet from my friend Jonah Goldberg, who is not a member of the left. He's very thoughtful, very smart, conservative. He wrote liberal fascism, for example, and many other fine books. But he wrote in response to my argument that it was unconstitutional. 
Hugh, if it were a secret vote, a majority of the House and Senate GOP would vote to impeach and remove. They aren't taking this position out of fidelity to the Constitution. I doubt even Lindsey Graham and Rand Paul believe what they're saying. Your response, Senator. You know, I think that's completely untrue. Look, I voted against uh, decertifying the electors. I believe that uh, I'm a consistent believer in states' rights, that I do think states decide the elections and send the electors. I think there was fraud, and I think some of the states could have done a better job, but I wasn't to get for the Congress overturning this. With regard to criticizing him for this, do I think that he should have called on the vice president to overturn it? No, I think that's a ludicrous thing to do. So I think these were inappropriate political things. I disagree with the policy. I'm willing to call them out, and I think that's where it goes. But I'm not willing to say that a political speech, that you're responsible for a bunch of nuts that showed up at a riot, and, and created a riot. If we do that, every politician in the land would be responsible for a lot of crazy people who show up at riot. So no, I do absolutely look at this on the constitutional basis. I think it's a bad idea to impeach a former president or a private citizen. And I think when the Constitution said that you can remove from office and disqualify, I think that what Alan Dershowitz has said on this is correct. It's talking about both. It's talking about removing from office and disqualifying. It's not talking about removing from office or disqualifying. If you're not in office, impeachment isn't appropriate, and this whole thing is a farce. I do, I do believe that Judge Ludig has made the conclusive argument supported by Professor Dershowitz. I understand that there are others, including conservatives like uh, Stephen Calabresi at uh, Northwestern, who, who disagree with us. But I am nevertheless con convinced on the plain reading of the the Constitution, it is not constitutional. Senator, I want to ask you about your exchange with George Stephanopoulos. I like George. I've been on his show. I do not believe he understood the point you were making, which is he had moved from being a journalist to being an advocate. I am now of the opinion that almost all American media has divided into left or right. Some of us are transparent about it. I am a center-right conservative. Many deny that. What do you think is the situation of American media today, as illustrated by your exchange with George Stephanopoulos Sunday? You know, I think it's gotten so much worse, and I think it's a reaction to Trump. I don't think it's Trump's fault, but the media got uh, to the point where they can't hear two sides to an argument anymore, and they inject themselves into the debate. And a journalist, you know, if you're an opinion editor or a talk show host like yourself, you don't have to say, oh, I'm completely neutral. You have a point of view. He's trying to be a journalist and run a Sunday news program. He's not supposed to be an opinion editor, I don't think. And so he should try to hear from both sides and be more neutral with it. But it got a lot worse. See, I used to go on MSNBC. I used to go on CNN. I was one. And as you know, I've got some disagreements with you on foreign policy that you someone the left would like. But yep. the thing is, is I can't go on the left-wing TV anymore because there's only one truth, and it's their truth. And basically, I'm called a liar every day. You know, Joe Scarborough used to be somewhat sane. He is so deranged now that every other morning he's calling me a liar. How can I go on a program where they're calling me a liar and they're not even willing to listen to my side of it? And they've decided that, you know, it's just untrue. Everything I say is untrue. It's not an opinion. I, don't, I can't even have an opinion because only their opinion is true. And that is such a closed-minded, small-minded sort of attitude that it really isn't good for debate. It's not good for a free country to have arbiters of truth. It isn't good for the media to be prosecutors either. George was attempting to prosecute you. Will you not at least say this? And I thought to myself, that reminds me of prosecution. That's not the job of the media. I want to play you one more thing. Jake Tapper on CNN yesterday, cut number eight. Bill Clinton lied under oath, and they thought that there needed to be, he needed to be removed from office for lying under oath. Donald Trump incites a terrorist attack, and they have a different standard. Now, I've worked well with Jake in the past on the debate. Senator Paul, you remember the four that we did together, two of which Jake moderated, two that Wolf moderated. That is simply mixing completely different situations because President Clinton was in office and President Trump is not. Do, are they unaware of these things or do they not care? Well, they also start out with a conclusion, incites a riot. There's a big debate over this. Look, I disagreed with President Trump on the issue. But whether he incited a riot is a real question. And if you look at the words he said, and the words that they quote are that you should go fight to take back your country. But he also says peacefully. So they're going to have it's, – it's almost an impossible task. It's a real question as to whether any of that – you can say you disagreed with the argument and the debate that he shouldn't have given a speech like that. 
but he never said anything about violence and never encouraged violence. So I think they have a lot of trouble even proving a point that they start with. I think you're right, Senator Paul. Thank you for making the point yesterday. Keep coming back. I appreciate it even when we disagree. Don't go anywhere, America. It's 